Hi everybody, I'm Voice Monet and welcome to the channel. You're probably here because you're interested in all things DIY, from home renovation to making music to raising families to financial literacy. Well, you've landed in the right place. And if you gain any value from any content that you see from this page, I'd love for you to go ahead and hit that like button, turn on your notifications and subscribe to the channel. And even more importantly, leave me a comment and ask a question below because if you're out here trying to do this by yourself, the most important thing you can do is ask questions. Now, I am in no way a professional. I'm an average Joe, just like you, but I asked the questions and I saw it through to the end. So I'd love to take you guys on this adventure with me. Um, last spring, I started a DIY backyard renovation. Uh, the vision was to create a eco-friendly, sustainable, off-grid build here in my city of New Orleans because we are subject to hurricane season every year. What that means, most people think that the imminent threat from hurricanes is from the actual hurricane itself. Well, not true. If you survive a hurricane, which I highly recommend you leaving if you have to leave, cat three and higher, cat four and higher, get out of there. The motivation for this came from evacuating for Hurricane Ida a couple years ago, uh, which was a very stressful situation. It also triggered some PTSD in me from Hurricane Katrina, which I am also a survivor of. So anyway, that's a long-winded explanation, but I decided to build an off-grid sustainable uh, hurricane house for me and my family post-storms when the city has no electricity or um, available municipal water. So that was my vision. All right, so first it required outlining where I wanted things to go in my barren backyard. Man, all that ginger in the corner. I remember those days. So anyway, I, I found out the specs on the dome that I wanted to purchase. I wound up going with a company called Phoenix Domes out of Canada. And once I got the specs, I roughly mapped out in my backyard how much space I thought this would take up. Now, there are rules in building properties. I needed to make sure that I was three feet off the property line from my neighbor's house and from the back fence. My goal with this build was to create privacy because as you see this monstrosity of a house was built behind me after I purchased my home. When I first moved in here this was an empty keystone lot behind me and then last summer they came in and built this thing in like four or five months. So in an effort to get privacy but in the most efficient way I came up with this idea for a geodesic dome with a homestead operation around it and some spa amenities because I'm kind of bougie like that so what you see me doing here is seeing how high up the dome will go to mask the windows of my neighbors now like I said I am no professional so I always use what is on hand and make my calculations in my mind I'm sure there's a quicker easier way to do this but this is my first time doing a build out of this scale so you learn as you go. And one thing I did learn from this whole situation was that once you get past the learning curve, or at least once I got past the learning curve, things started to move fairly quickly. So I found a center point, and then the radius of the dome is supposed to be 10 feet. So I made that a 10 foot loop and then created the circumference with that loop. And then marked out, as you can see, these little dots on the ground. This is the etching of what the pathway is going to be. And a lot of my time was spent just standing and envisioning because for me, if I can't see it, it's hard for me to work my way towards it. But I made it happen. I think what I love the most, y'all, is how much Amethyst loves being outside. She was an apartment dog. So for her, me and her just hang back here, and I feel her. I was cooped up in an apartment all my younger life. It wasn't cooped up because I was definitely like out in the streets having fun. But we grew up in apartments and condo kind of settings in LA. So not only is it sweet to have a house, but to have a backyard and to build it out. Okay, so let me stop talking. Let me just show you what I'm up to. This circle right here, this is going to be where I'm going to put in a geodesic dome oh yes a geodesic dome right in that spot 
be about 12 feet high, which will block out these intrusive windows, these four right here, because in the last year, this big monstrosity was created. And as you can see, these windows up here, thank goodness there's blinds in there, but they really offer me no privacy or my backyard any privacy because those people, as soon as they open the blinds down into my backyard, they could look if they're interested. I don't know. So anyway, my design is going to include a pathway here leading to the dome door. The door is where the trash can is. It's important when you do build out y'all to put some markers. This is the pathway that will lead into the backyard, the pedestrian pathway. These two water coolers right here are marking out the edges of a seating area around a fire pit. Back here is going to be all of my vegetable garden along the fence. Back there, you see where the compost bin is. That is probably going to get scooted to the back corner behind the dome, out of sight, out of mind for guests. And then I'm trying to utilize this corner here, right next to the banana tree, um, for my solar setup because I want this to all be off the grid. So let's come back down the trail, through the fire pit, cross the pathway, and then right here where my olive tree is positioned and my fern. This is my morning shade and afternoon shade garden. So I'm going to do like my green leafy vegetables, some herbs, my ornamentals that don't require a whole lot of light are going to go right here. There'll be a pathway around here. And then that little area there is carved out for what I thought was going to be a slab. But my contractor uh, gave me this information about these grid pavers. And because I'm in like swampy land, I'm not like pro concrete in a lot of ways because we're in a place where the ground is meant to absorb water. Let's keep it that way. So this slab here that came with the build out of the house, I'm really debating taking it out, but my contractor needs it as a workspace as we build. So I get it. So let's look this way where Amy is. This is going to be more gravel pathway, an arbor here, and then all the way down there will be a gated entry on this side, installing a fence along the line because this fence has had its heyday. It's actually broken right over here, so uh, Amethyst, whoever lived in this house before I had my house built, this is the kind of lovely shoddy work you see in New Orleans. I'm trying not to achieve that. I'm trying to like make it kind of nice. So I like things kind of nice and I just want to like enjoy my home. Like, all right. So today's task, this has been my standing compost pile for over a year, I'd say. Uh, these banana leaves, banana tree, a lot of them died in uh, not the last uh, winter snap, but the one before, actually. So this is some good compost. So today's task, because I just received my composter, my still standing compost bin, which holds 102 gallons, I believe. But I'm shocked because it's like already almost full. But cool thing about compost is, it biodegrades, so it'll shrink. In case this is, you've never composted, that'll shrink. So what I'm going to do today is I have to cut back all this ginger because it's in the way of where my tomatoes, peppers, sugarcane, lemongrass, sunflowers are going to grow on all along here. So everything I just mentioned will be over here where this ginger is because this is clearly a fertile lush section of the garden it'll also create a privacy screen against the fence for this view out of the dome which will be a bay window so it's not like a completely sealed dome you actually get a nice view and i want the view to be nice this ginger looks cool but it's too much i love ginger but i don't need that much ginger so cutting it out uprooting it 
probably saving a little bit because ginger's cool, but it does the most with all this rain. And then along here is going to be uh, along the wall, growing up vertically. I'm going to do melons, cucumbers, uh, sweet potatoes, uh, some squash. Here there will be raised beds behind the fire pit area uh, where I'll be doing beans, brassicas, berries, pepper, you name it. I'm going to try to... I'm going to try to squeeze as much as I can in here for it to be of quality, for me to have the food that I eat, um, for it to restore the ecosystem. Like, I love the animals and birds and insects that come. I got to acclimate myself to the rodents because I'm not the rodent person, but, you know, if there's food on premise, they might come. So the dome goes here. So today, my task is... And then let me show you over here. If we walk the pathway, this would be up the steps to the dome. Here I'm thinking of planting a magnolia tree, if I have one. Come back around, this would be where in an ideal world the jacuzzi would go. Um, if it's not, if I don't have a jacuzzi in my budget, it'll probably be my little greenhouse or shed. And then I have some rain barrels. This is going to come out. I need to regrade all this with those gravel grids I was talking about because they support weight and nothing is heavier than a container holding water. So I'm going to do that all along this side of the house because this is the side that clearly gets the most water runoff, hence the growth in the plants. And once this is graded, I'll bring back the rain barrels and there will also be a fence on this side with a gate on this side. All right, so with that said, today's task, and when I say task, I don't know why I'm choosing to do this because I do have a whole editing project that is due, but that's not the part of my brain and my mind that is speaking to me today. So I'm going to cut back all this ginger if I have time, I'll uproot, start uprooting it. But I'm definitely going to cut it back, cut it all out, chop it down, and I'm going to relocate it between this compost bin and that compost bin. Then, once I get the roots out, I will then shift this pile of mulch over here because this actually slopes considerably which is probably why everything grows so well here, but I want to um, remulch this area because this banana tree looks amazing. I know, don't judge me, it's so high up, but I'm about to get all that pruned this week. This banana tree with some mulch down here to protect its roots is going to like be so delicious looking during the summer and ahead. I've never really, I've never treated this side of the yard at all. I've never done anything to this yard, as you can see, it's a blank slate. But since they brought in this monstrosity, it's motivated me to like actually build things out, get things right, so I can hang out in my backyard, y'all. Cause it's got a lot of potential. So that's what I'm gonna get into. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on a little time lapse for y'all so you can enjoy with some music, of course. And I'll catch you later. All right, y'all. So I'm extending this because I don't know what lies in wait in these ginger. We get buku hornets and stuff. And I make sure. Now, I could do this with like a chainsaw, but I actually like the workout. I went under a homestead contract in 2019, purchased a lot and had a new build made for me just prior to the pandemic well was supposed to close in march of 2020 that obviously didn't happen 
was pushed back to January of 2021. But what I was gifted with was a brand new, modern, sustainable home and a completely blank slate backyard. So I was like, hey, let's build out the backyard and make it the safe space that we want it to be. So I obviously had a lot of tree cover, dead mulch. I had definitely spent the year in the house prior um, to this build collecting debris, mulch. I'm a big gardener. I know how important it is for our ecosystem to uh, retain some of its natural elements. So I, you can't see it here in this image, but there's a big banana tree in the very far corner of my backyard. This is post a freeze, so everything is dead. And if I didn't explain, there's green compost and there's brown compost. I'm gonna have buku green compost, but I got buku brown, so it should be all right. But what I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm breaking down some of these banana leaves and ginger leaves that are in this standing compost pile because it is going to all get moved to a raised garden bed that I have yet to create. Now this was a total If you're into manual labor, go ahead and use the garden shears or the loppers to do this, but I quickly realized that a wood chipper slash mulcher would be ideal if I was, uh, in theory, trying to keep as much of the waste material that I got from my land on my land and repurpose it. So I did this for the first day or two, fought with this ginger and then decided. Ooh, okay, so after all of that, I'm definitely getting a wood chipper. I mean, I'm not about to hand cut all of this because I got a big project to do. And efficiency is key. And if I'm gonna be raising all these trees, growing banana, I need to really make sure that I have the ability to like be self-contained. So I don't think I'm gonna get to uprooting that today because uh, I need to go get like a big old fort. I don't even know what the term is. This is gonna be so funny, like watching a city girl figure this out. But anyway, I'm, um, I'm supposed to go with my mom to a concert later, so I'm not gonna do too much. I don't wanna be worn out. But my next goal is to get those roots out, um, that good mulch over to that corner, laid out because some gravel grid is gonna go there. Uh, and you're wondering why like the weight of lemongrass and all that should not require gravel grid. But it's because I've been paying attention to actually erosion and it slopes a little. So I know water lands here because that's why everything's so lush. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of extra protection over the years just in case the city floods again. I mean, it is New Orleans. So in case it's sitting underwater for a minute, which it's likely to do, hopefully that gridlock will um, preserve some root systems and not make it too bad once the water drains away. We'll see. I can't really anticipate forces of nature, but I can try to work in harmony with them as much as possible. So I'm going to probably spray, spread these uh, ginger stalks and stems out so they can dry a little bit more before I go get that good wood, wood, chip, wood chipper or leaf mulcher. I'm gonna do some research and see which one makes more sense. It's probably gonna be the wood chipper because I assume the wood chipper can mulch leaves and I don't plan on removing these leaves. Like any extra steps, any extra unnecessary steps for this build out are not happening. I'm really trying to double, triple, quadruple check everything before I make all decisions because time is key. Uh, I really want to give myself like two, two and a half months to make this happen. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Let's try it again. Take two. Hey everybody, I'm Voice Monet and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'd love for you to hit that like and or subscribe button. That's so stupid. Take three. 
Hi everybody, I'm Voice Monet and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'd love for you to hit that like. This is so f***ing horrible. Hi everybody, I'm Voice Monet and welcome to the channel. 